on Juice and Jack Easter weekend here in Central New York. Find out what's going on later in the show. Is set to put on another show as it celebrates its 50th season. And the solar eclipse is almost a week away. Find out how Syracuse is preparing. Juice and Java starts right now. Good morning, I'm Alana Epstein. And I'm Zach Richter. We really do have a packed show for you guys today. We'll take a look at a local antique store and we'll speak with a local celebrity. But we're going to begin with Easter here in Syracuse. And celebrations in the area have already started to bring in the spring holiday. That's where our Caitlin Campbell joins us now live from an Easter egg hunt. Caitlin, did you get any luck finding the golden egg? Alana, unfortunately, I did not find the golden egg here. I mean, I'm at the Community Wesleyan Church here in Baldwinville right now. They had an Easter egg come this morning for children, and now they're having some crafts, they're having Easter movies, and it's just a great family fun event. So now I have some special guests here. Come on in. Everybody can say their names. What's your name? I'm Adelie. Okay. My name is Ben. Okay. And my name is Elijah. And what is your favorite part about Easter? Um, I like Easter egg hunts and probably the fact that Jesus rose from the dead for us. Okay. Um, I like the Easter egg hunts too. Okay. Easter egg hunts. And do you guys like Easter candy? What Do you have a favorite Easter candy here? I probably like all like gummy candies mm -hmm. and, or milk chocolate. Okay. What about you? Um, milk chocolate, but specifically Reese's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are good ones. Have you guys been having fun here today? Yeah. yeah, it's really fun. Oh, that's great. Did you guys make any fun crafts? Like, what crafts did you make? I made this necklace uh, with cool. a cross on it. Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Reporting in Syracuse, I'm Caitlin Campbell, Citrus TV News. Caitlin, thanks so much. They're adorable. And speaking of Easter, Hendricks Chapel has a plethora of services for students to attend tomorrow. Starting off at 10 a.m. is a Mormon service. There's a non-denominational service at 11 a.m., then a Catholic Mass at 1 p.m., Lutheran at 5 p.m., and finally wrapping things up with a historically black church service at 6.30 p.m. All events take place at Hendricks Chapel. And the SU Department of Philosophy and CNY Humanities Corridor are working together to host a two-day workshop about modern philosophy. The event will feature six presentations over two days, including one from an SU professor. The speakers will cover topics including John Locke's theory of language and Kant's belief of lying. The workshop started this morning and has lectures running through tomorrow afternoon in Tully Hall. Coming up next month, Syracuse University will be celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander heritage. Nationally, AAPI celebrations happen in May, but SU starts in April to host events before students head home for the summer. This year's theme is Harmony and Heritage, as a reminder that there is an importance in preserving all parts of one's cultural heritage. Starting off next Thursday, the AAPI History Month Committee is hosting a kickoff and info fair, followed by a holy celebration on Saturday, a keynote speaker on April 6th, and closing with an alumni speaker event on April 17th. And the SU Department of Drama has announced their next performance will be the show Touched. The play tells the story of a middle school teacher who is taking care of her sister after she is released from a psychiatric facility. Performances of Touched will be running at the Syracuse stage from April 5th through the 14th, and tickets are available for purchase through the Syracuse stage website or by calling the box office. And not only is Syracuse Stage putting on another show, but it's also celebrating its 50th season. Juice and Java reporter Riley Faye tells us more about what the 50th season <laughs> means to Syracuse. This is Syracuse Stage's 50th anniversary. The acting director of marketing, Joseph Whelan, says they have been celebrating all season with special visitors, a 50th anniversary website, a mural, and a photo booth for patrons. We have a booth set up where we've been inviting our patrons to come and share their memories of Syracuse Stage. Uh, we're collecting those uh, recordings and we're going to turn that into an oral history, uh, which will also be on our website. Uh, throughout the season on opening nights, we've been celebrating various people who have been affiliated with uh, the theater. 
During those 50 seasons, Syracuse Stage has helped the community through education, charity, and their connection with SU. Whereby students can participate in Syracuse Stage shows. Uh, uh, once a year that opportunity comes through the big musical, but there are other times that students might be cast in a professional show. Ladies and gentlemen, the Orient Express will depart in 20 minutes. I would just uh, encourage people to come on down and see a show. You'll enjoy yourself. It's a good time. And, you know, best possible outcome, maybe it'll give you something to think about or introduce you to a kind of theater or a playwright that you didn't know before and then now you have that in your life. Syracuse's drama department will perform Touch starting this Friday at the Syracuse stage. For Juice and Java, I'm Riley Fay. Hey Riley, thanks so much. It's been nearly a century since Syracuse has seen a total solar eclipse. But next week on Monday, the city will find itself in complete darkness. Syracuse is situated on the path of totality. To see the once-in-a-lifetime event, the College of Arts and Sciences are letting students rent telescopes for the day. The Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs is giving out solar eclipse glasses to those outside. Zach, how crazy is it that we'll be able to see the solar eclipse right here in Syracuse? I know, it's pretty crazy. I'm going to have to grab myself a pair of glasses right there because you really should not stare directly at it, even though it's a, you know, it's, it, it won't really hurt your eyes, but it w you won't know it hurt, it is hurting your eyes, but looking at it, it could seriously hurt your eyes. So please buy the solar glasses. And, and it's I think good they're and giving really them exciting. out for free at Destiny. Which, w it's just going to be amazing. So definitely get yourself solar <laughs> glasses. <laughs> and well, let's hope that the weather is clear. And let's hope it starts to get clear now, because I know the weather this week, it's been pretty cold. But our weather anchor, Leah Cohen, will be able to tell us more about the weather. Leah, how's it looking out there? Zach, I want to let you know that I have my glasses, so my eyes will be okay. But today we have some colder temperatures around 41 degrees. And when I was walking to station today, I had my jacket and I was a little upset about that. Now it's going to be partly cloudy with, you know, 13 miles per hour winds. So if you have a hood, I'd suggest putting it right on up. Now, I know behind me is a little scary, but it is Easter weekend. And I wanted to celebrate with you about the um, other tradition of uh, Easter is people dressing up in uh, bunny costumes. Now, as a child, I was uh, quite terrified of these costumes, so therefore I shared some photos that um, represented what I grew up with as well. Um, I also wanted to um, say that tomorrow might not be the day for uh, Sunday dress. It's going to be colder temperatures around the mid-40s. And with our five-day weather forecast, now we're going to be having temperatures around the low uh, 50s. Um, and on Sunday, you can see the Easter Bunny is popping up there again. Now, um, back to you guys over at Alana and Zach. Okay, Leah, thank you. On a campus with a student body of over 15,000, alongside a massive team of dedicated staff, it might be difficult to stick out. However, this is far from the case when talking about the Uber driver and campus celebrity. Citrus TV's Charlie Goldberg tells us how Troy Boyer transformed himself into the Q's candy man. It's an Uber that's anything but typical. With the variety of colors, decoration, and candy, Troy Boyer turned his car into the sweetest ride in Syracuse and turned himself into the Q's candy man. The students just started calling me the candy man because I had candy in my car. Almost a seven year staple now on campus, Boyer has done everything in his power to live up to his name. I'm here for fun, you know, and I try to give everybody you know, as much joy as I can. Yeah, it's really turned into a pretty big monster, you know, but I, I, I really love this campus. However, this truckload of treats doesn't come cheap. I go between about 200 to 250 bucks a week. In candy. I've done I've done almost 300 a few times, but it all depends what's going on up here too and how busy it is. Yet for Boyer, it's worth every penny. It's priceless. I, I spent a thousand dollars. I mean, the the smiles and the joy it brings everybody on this campus. That that's all I need. The legend of the Q's candy man lives on today, as Boyer spreads fun and joy, being a prime example what a five-star rated Uber looks like. Charlie Goldberg, Citrus TV News.
Thank you so much. An entertainment attraction at Destiny USA is closing after seven years. The Museum of Intrigue opened in 2017. It is an interactive experience that lets visitors solve mysteries. Yesterday, the museum announced that it will be leaving the mall at the end of April. Yeah, that's right. The owners of the Museum of Intrigue said that they are still looking for a new location that is big enough for them. Intrigue Mobile Events, educational programs, and collabor collaborations with local businesses will continue, though. And a finale event for the mall location will be held on April 19th, and the museum, museum will be open every weekend until April 20th. So definitely go get out there and try to visit it if you have not gone yet. Yeah, definitely. They still have another month. I personally never got to head to that museum, but I know there's a lot of really cool attractions at the mall. There's you know, escape rooms and other things like that. Have you ever been to any of those? I've been to a couple of escape rooms, but I haven't been to the Museum of Intrigue, but still another couple of weeks to go get it. We could go right after Juice and Java today. Yeah, that's true. But Juice and Java is still getting started on this Saturday. After the break, we will talk with an international taste festival organizer. And we'll tell you all about what they're offering and what you should look forward to. Don't go anywhere. Hi, house. Everybody's pretty tired of each other. The walls were closing in. Clearly, a case of too much family, too close, 24-7. If this sounds like your house, try going someplace new. YourLifeYourVoice.org. You'll find lots of ideas to help you handle the family stresses of being confined to close quarters. YourLifeYourVoice.org. It could help you find a little more breathing room. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Back to Juice and Java. If you're looking to try food from all over the world, look no further than the International Taste Festival. The festival is taking place next Saturday at the fairgrounds, and we have festival organizer Stephanie Pastillo with us to talk about what visitors can expect. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I do appreciate it. Of course, we're so happy to have you here. So how did this festival get started? Believe it or not, this festival started, of course, go figure during 2020, our year of pandemic when everything started. And our whole intentions of having the festival was to bring together the community at large. We have so many separate festivals in Syracuse, Irish Fest, Polish Fest, Middle Eastern Fest. And I thought, why not have everyone together at one place and one location? So great to hear. And what, can you talk about what kind of work goes into organizing an event like this? Oh, well, it just couldn't be me by myself. Of course, I have an amazing committee all throughout the Syracuse area of those that best represent their cultures and communities. So we, of course, have individuals from our Asian community, our Pan-African community, the Middle Eastern community, the Indian community. How could I do this by myself? So I'm so grateful to them to be part of this. Stephanie, sounds like you have a great team there. What should attendees of the festival look forward to? From the second the festival begins and even before it begins, of course it begins at 11 a.m., but before that we have a 5K, 10K race that starts off the whole event. This goes through the fairgrounds and then through the amphitheater trail onto the Empire Trail, and then it ends right back at the festival. Then as soon as that 5K, 10K race ends, the festival begins at 11. And so you talked about earlier how the festival started, but now we're curious about how it has grown over the years. So believe it or not, this is only the third year of the festival, and we are so grateful and so honored to be ranked and voted as one of the top 10 city food festivals in the country. So that just gives you an idea of how much this has grown from a smaller scale event 
to now year three, top 10 in the country. So Stephanie, it's year three. So what is your favorite part of this festival? Oh my gosh, the food. <laughs> Absolutely the food. We have five different areas or focuses of food. Those being foods of the Americas, Asian creation, tastes of Europe, Pan-African cuisine, and Middle Eastern treats. So there's really something for everyone and anyone to enjoy at the festival. So do you have a favorite food? Uh, <laughs> I will tell you, last year I was so lucky to try for the first time Ethiopian food. And wow. it was absolutely <laughs> amazing. How different. Well, that sounds so amazing. I think Zach and I will definitely both be attending, right? Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Stephanie. It was so great speaking with you. After the break, all your entertainment news with the latest on Lizzo. And your five-day forecast is still to come. We'll be right back. Was improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoking. It looks as if smoking is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. And it was a big mor morning in the entertainment industry. Lizzo announcing she is quitting making music. And Beyonce is now a country artist. Here to break down the Lizzo controversy and Beyonce's newest album is reporter Maura Vaughn. Guys, Maura, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's good to be back on the entertainment desk. It's, and yes, it was a crazy week in entertainment, especially these past two days, with Lizzo announcing last night that she's leaving the music industry. Now, this may be in light to earlier this week, Lizzo is facing another lawsuit from three of her dancers of sexual and religious harassment, as well as creating a hostile work environment and receiving major backlash from the community once again in this new lawsuit while on tour. Lizzo posted a statement on Instagram to announce her potential departure departure from music saying, quote, I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views. I didn't sign up for this. I quit. Now, fans speculate if this is going to be the real deal or if Lizzo just needs a break from social media. Earlier this week, Lizzo stated regarding the allegations of creating a toxic work environment that she, quote, takes nothing, nothing more seriously than the respect we deserve as women in the world. I know what it feels like to be body shamed on a daily basis, and I would never criticize or terminate an employee because of their weight, end quote. And combining two of my favorite parts of music, Beyonce and country, Beyonce released her first country album last night, Cowboy Carter. Now this is a jam-packed album full of so many of my favorite artists such as Miley Cyrus, Post Malone, Willie Nelson, and Dolly Parton. Fans' reactions have been very positive, with some on TikTok even saying this is one of her best albums yet. Now, if you have not had the chance to listen to Cowboy Carter yet, here's my playlist for you all. I did a little of a creation. Mm. Number one has got to be spaghetti. It's kind of rap, which isn't typical of Beyonce. Number two, I have to go with Yaya. Number three, Jolene, which I was a little worried about her covering Jolene because how can you even touch it? She does an incredible job. It is so fun to listen to. And then number four, I chose River Dance, which is a little bit of a folklore kind of song. And then five, Levi G's. Now, Zach and Alana, have you two had the chance to listen to the album yet? 
I have. I listened to it twice. I've kind of been <laughs> yeah. obsessed with it. I didn't it's know so what to expect. One song you didn't put on there, but I have to say it's my favorite. It's Bodyguard. I just yes. love that Ooh. one. Yes. It's charting really well right now. And I think it might be the next single. I'm yes. not really sure. But the two collaborations, Post Malone and Miley Cyrus, are amazing. Did you get to listen to it? I didn't yet, but I, I was curious. What is your least favorite out of all the songs that you Ooh. released? <laughs> I know, a tough one. We're talking about favorites, so. OK, there are a few I haven't gotten around to listening to yet. I okay. haven't. So I'll say the ones that, not least favorite, but ones I haven't listened to. I haven't listened to Daughter yet, which is a, for Beyonce's daughter. So mm -hmm. I think that'll be a really influential song. But I have to still listen to the rest of the album. But those top five were the ones I've listened to so far but at first when I heard she was doing country I was like oh this is completely different out of her wheelhouse but she blew it out of the park once she, again she, she definitely, definitely no did I definitely recommend both yes. of you go back and listen it's Queen amazing. B for a reason so great to have you Maura well when we come back a decades old antique store is still in business we'll be right back eat this entire bowl of nachos but tonight he's earned that right because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome to my house. Lately, not my happy place. Everybody's pretty tired of each other. The parents were not themselves. My little brothers were morphing into small creatures. The walls were closing in. Clearly a case of too much family, too close, 24-7. And there's a lot of that going around right now. If this sounds like your house, try going someplace new. YourLifeYourVoice.org You'll find lots of ideas to help you handle the family stresses of being confined to close quarters. YourLifeYourVoice.org It might not get you out of the house, but it could help you find a little more breathing room. Welcome back to Juice and Java. We're here at the Syracuse Antique Exchange today. It's a massive antique shop with everything you could possibly imagine and we're about to head inside. Let's take a closer look. We're here at Syracuse Antiques with the co-owner. Would you be able to introduce yourself and tell us sure. what you do here? Yeah, my name is Matt Pastore. I'm a co-owner of Syracuse Antiques Exchange. We've been here for over 30 years. We have four floors and 75 different vendors and you know, I'm here to kind of give you guys a little bit of a tour today. How do you guys get everything in the store? It's it's because it's crazy. <laughs> so like what the store focuses on is getting good dealers and okay. then the dealers get the stuff and then we work with the customers that come in to buy it. So okay. the dealers focus on getting the stuff and then we focus on selling it for them. Okay. And you mentioned you have multiple floors of yeah. antiques here. So can you talk about that and how you split up everything on each floor? So we have four floors. It's a little over 20,000 to yes 20,000 square feet wow. and we have nice there's the first floor is a little more showcases and like fine furniture then as you get upstairs there's more like mid-century furniture vintage furniture usable furniture stuff that like anybody can buy and anybody like just for if you're looking for stuff for your apartment or just cool stuff to look at so we were talking about this earlier, even though it's called an antique store, it's not just all antiques, right? No, it's, it's not, especially these days, it's a lot of vintage. I mean, there's some antiques, there's some vintage, there's some, you know, really high quality, newer things that the dealers come across that we have here for significantly less than you'd find in a, in a store. But you know, it's not like stuff from Target, it's from like, you know, yeah. boutique stores that the dealers find, but we have everything basically. How many dealers do you guys have in I think we're right around like 75 dealers wow. right now. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I mean, and I'm a huge music lover, and I feel like record players are coming back in style. Do you guys have like oh, so yeah. many records? We have a we have several dealers that specialize in records. We want people to kind of like get lost in a good way and not get lost in a literal get lost type so of like sense. This <laughs> and forward is, is one dealer yep. from the black yep. line. Yep. Yep. And this is a different dealer here. Oh wow. And that's a different dealer wow. there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so each space in each case is a different dealer. Wow, and you get to each 
room has yeah, a like in this feel. this dealer is a local interior decorator, and you can obviously see like yeah. that influenced their their booth setup. We open at ten thirty. They come in at ten thirty in the morning, and they leave at like four o'clock <laughs> type oh of thing. Um, but yeah, we're open. We op we're open every day, ten thirty to five. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So if you could say anything to any students who are looking to come here, what would you tell them? I mean, I would say, you know, if this, what we shot here isn't enough, check out our Instagram. We have a really active Instagram. It's at Syracuse Antiques. And I think that we do a lot of our individual dealer highlights on that. And you can kind of really get a, a sense of all of the different vendors that sell through here and really their own like personal flares. We try and highlight that. Crazy. <laughs> this is great. I know I'll be coming back. Great. Definitely. Thank you so much for sure. showing Thank us you. around. Yeah, today. of course. And we'll see you guys back in studio. It was really, we really had such a great time there yesterday. We did. Unfortunately, we didn't get to buy anything, but I, Zach and I both said a bunch of times that we definitely want to go back. I loved the clothing. Yeah, and the, the, they're also going to be hosting an event at Harvey's Garden. And if you take a look on your screen right now, you can see it's going to be Saturday, April, coming up, I think April 6th or April 20th. And it'll be at <laughs> Harvey's Garden. They'll have live music and everything. There it is. Uh, yeah, good vibes, and that's what they're calling it. June 16th. Sorry I got the date wrong. But definitely, if you're on campus or whatnot, only a few minute walk away, so it should be a great time. <laughs> yeah, well, there won't be that many students in the area, but if you happen to be here, definitely go. When we come back, Leah Cohn has your wake up weather. We'll be right back. <laughs> Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner. Hello. Excellent. Talk to you. Yeah, I saw you guys out there. When you wake up tomorrow, you, we're going to have some colder temperatures around 39 degrees. That's going to be a little colder than what you're feeling today. But tomorrow we have some events that are going on in the morning, especially at Hendrix. You might be hearing some church bells, especially this bunny will. I found this bunny that has huge ears, never seen this thing before. But also I wanted to share with you a photo of the day, spring. Uh, we have a squirrel that was trying to get into um, our friend's apartment. Um, we've named it Franklin, and this reminded me of this lovely lady. Her name is Mother Nature from one of the Santa Claus claymation movies. I hope we've all seen that in our childhood. If not, that's disappointing. Um, people have said I look like her, but um, and uh, that's it, and back to you guys. <laughs> okay, Leah, thank you. <laughs> Well, <laughs> tomorrow is Easter Sunday. It's a Christian holiday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But Easter has a lot more cultural traditions, like the Easter Bunny decorating eggs and lots and lots of chocolate. Now, Maura, I know you have something here with us. It's a surprise. Okay. Can you see it? I got a little oh, treat wow. for everyone. Oh, Happy God. Easter. You can open them. Is there them. anything? Okay, let's see. Haha, ha, just kidding. April Fool's. There's nothing in that. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, my God. Oh, that's so that's so disappointing. Maura, I heard you're afraid of the Easter Bunny. Yes. yes when I was right. little, Leah, those pictures were triggering of yeah. the Easter Bunny. Yeah, that just, like, well. shook something to my core. My dad would always dress up for like an Easter egg hunt in our neighborhood, but he would find the creepiest suit possibly ever. So well, I am afraid of that. Our own Juice and, Juice and Java's very own Riley Underwood dressed as the Easter <laughs> Bunny <laughs> the other day, but 
<laughs> it was it was definitely something. I hope you're not scared of yeah. that. But that's all the time we have for Juice and Java this morning. Check us out online on social media. I'm Zach Richter. I'm on Epstein. <laughs>